Good morning, Bermuda. The closest point though, Fiona has passed us. And I think we have come, come through this here in pretty good shape. The initial stages cannot really be determined until fresh light when our emergency crews can get out on the streets to access to to um, assess the the actual damage that we have we have received. So I'm asking the public to stay off the roads for as long as possible, so that our emergency crews can be our only roads, so we can determine determine what is the state of our roadways. And those that are wanting to do work around their homes, my my suggestion and advice is to be careful. I would I would I would um, advise that we stay. We stay inside because the worst is going, but we're still in the throes of tropical storm winds. So we don't want anyone getting hurt at this time. So um, I will pass it on now to Dr. Gashad of the Bermuda Weather Service to give us an update. Dr. Gashad. Thank you, Minister, and good morning, Bermuda. Um, we do have the closest point of approach, which has officially passed us. Uh, nonetheless, I would like to caution that um, we uh, we do remain in hurricane force winds, and there are a few more significant rain bands to get through before we uh, start to think about downgrading our warnings. Um, the, um, the, the downgrade of the hurricane warning to the tropical storm warning will probably be in the next couple of hours. So probably by the 9 a.m. advisory, and then winds will be expected to abate below 50 knots by around 10 a.m. Um, then thereafter, we'll see a, a, a lingering period of tropical storm force winds into the mid-afternoon, um, and probably you start to, to drop those uh, tropical storm, that tropical storm warning by, um, by 3 p.m. So just to reiterate, we are still under a hurricane warning that may be dropped by 9 a.m., um, and then further tropical storm warnings will be um, posted until probably mid-afternoon at this stage. And I did want to just uh, run through some of the worst experienced uh, conditions that we've had thus far uh, based on preliminary estimates um, at, uh, at 7 a.m. Uh, National Museum of Bermuda Commissioner's Point and Dockyard experienced uh, sustained winds of 73 knots, that's 84 miles an hour, and a gust to 98 knots, that's 113 miles per hour. Uh, again, these are preliminary numbers. Uh, down here at LF Wade International Airport, where we're based at the Bermuda Weather Service, we've seen uh, sustained winds of 50 knots, that's 58 miles per hour, and a, 70, a gust of 70 knots, that's 81 miles per hour. And up the hill at um, Fort George and St. George's, where Bermuda Maritime Operations Center is, they've had uh, sustained winds of six, 76 knots and a gust uh, to 90 knots, that's 87 miles per hour or 104 miles per hour gust. Um, so to be sure, a significant uh, event here in Bermuda. Peak surge thus far has uh, reached about two thirds of a foot, so quite quite a lot less than we were expecting at the time, but probably higher in, and that's at Ferry Reach, I should say, probably much higher and more exposed shorelines. And um, that, that uh, peak storm tide is just approaching now. So we've got uh, high tide at 7.30. And so uh, right now we should see the, the worst um, uh, storm tide as the sun is coming up. So we might be able to get some, some assessment of that. Uh, pressure has dropped here at the airport to 990 millibars and is uh, I'm hoping that is it's bottoming out and starting to rise again after, after now. Um, and rainfall thus far hasn't uh, seen a lot getting into the rain gauge. So far, we've only got about a third of an inch. Um, so uh, much more of a wind event than, than anything, but uh, we do remain in that uh, hurricane force, uh, sorry, that hurricane warning condition. Uh, so please do not uh, let your guard down uh, over the next few hours. Uh, thanks very much, Minister. I'm happy to pass it back on to you. Yes, Dr. Gashad, um, I really appreciate that. We have now handed over to Colonel Beasley at the Bermuda Regiment to get an update from the from the regiment. Colonel Beasley. Hi, Minister. Yeah, the uh, the, the soldiers all uh, were in body yesterday afternoon. Uh, first thing, we're coming and checking their kit and equipment. 
uh, to inspect everything that we're taking out. Uh, they've had the Ravali this morning. Uh, they're all in their barrack rooms uh, having having breakfast. And we're certainly just on, on the wait until the um, until the wind reaches the, the threshold where we can conduct uh, reconnaissance across the island for any issues that will prevent emergency vehicles. Uh, transiting to, towards the hospital is the first requirement uh, that we do. And then once there's a safe route throughout the island, it'll be making sure there's either two routes or secondary roads. Uh, the Wolverine we'll Ridge Coast Guard is standing by to put their boats back in the water to service any of the islands and any residents that uh, may be in distress out there. Uh, all the crews do have uh, EMR or EMT placed with them. So uh, the five um, response teams, uh, 15 soldiers in each of them, uh, will be able to cut across the island quite quickly to uh, understand the situation and then be able to take proper actions from there. We, uh, we do ask it if anybody has a call for service, you please do through do it through the EMO, uh, EMO central number and uh, the new application that EMO is using can task us uh, or any other service appropriately. And I'm sure that number will be given out at the end of this brief. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. Back to you. Thank you, Colonel, uh, for, that, for that brief. Um, I'd like to now hand it over to Mr. Linda Reyna of the Disaster Management Team. Mr. Reyna, are you there? <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Yes, Minister. Um, at the moment, we are, as the Colonel said, we are just waiting for press light um, before we can get started some assessments of what's going on across the island. But overnight, it has been relatively quiet. Um, we had one burglary report, um, seven fire alarms, uh, which were attributed to power outages. Um, four medical calls, which two of which resulted in hospital stay. And as we stated earlier, about 20,000 people without electricity. And we just got a report in a few minutes ago with one purifier down at Dunkers. So at the moment, things are pretty quiet for us here in the EMO operations room. But I su suspect that once um, first light comes and people start moving around, we we'll probably start getting reports of down wires and whatnot. But we are going to be coordinating all our response through the public works parks and our VR response teams. Minister. All right, Mr. Renner, thank you uh, very much for that. So as I as I recap, I have to say that um, we have we have um, passed passed the 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 uh, closest point. But as as we have heard. We are still in the throes of, of the tropical storm wind. So I still urge the public to remain vigilant, stay off your roads, look out for your loved ones, and let the emergency services um, do, the, do the assessment so that we could get our island back up and running as soon as possible. Um, before I close, I'd like to give the emergency EMO number. And the number is, for anyone that may have an emergency, it's 444-1447. That's 444-1447. So stay, stay safe, Bermuda, stay vigilant, and, and continue to look out for each other. And our next update will be in a few hours. Thank you.